Thank you all for joining us today. We have a lot to celebrate in February. We have Black History Month, Valentine's Day, Heart Health Month, and not to mention the Aloha Adventure. As we've seen an increase in heart-related issues with the surge of COVID, finding easy ways to support a heart-healthy lifestyle is important to us and our followers at Walk With A Doc. We've rounded up an incredible panel of physicians to dive into some amazing strategies to support a more heart-healthy lifestyle. We'd like to say thank you to our event partner, Fresh Avocados, Love One Today, as we work together to inspire and support those in their journey to better heart health. Fresh Avocados, Love One Today is a leading source of the healthiest reasons and tastiest ways to enjoy fresh avocados. As you can see at loveonetoday.com forward slash WWAD, it is a science-based resource that provides turnkey solutions like handouts and recipes to make it easy for health professionals as well as consumers to stay on top of the latest research about avocado goodness. So with that, on with the show. Let's meet our superstar lineup. Hi, I'm Dr. Teresa Wee, and I'm actually from Oahu, Hawaii. I'm a pediatrician in private practice, and I'm one of the Walk With A Doc leaders here on Oahu uh, for the past six years, and I'm really enjoying this Aloha adventure and spotlighting the beauty of Hawaii. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Lisa Fitzpatrick. I'm an infectious diseases doctor and I lead Walk with the Doc in Washington, D.C. Hi everyone, uh, my name is uh, Rizwan Bukhari. I'm a vascular surgeon in the Dallas area and uh, uh, I've been participating with Walk with Doc I think for three years now, we're going into our fourth year. Uh, um, wanted to say that I got into this space uh, because uh, my work in healthcare and especially the cardiovascular arena uh, has uh, uh, made me think a lot about making lifestyle changes. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Seattle Dunbar. I'm actually in Portland, Oregon right now. I'm a family medicine physician and also board certified in lifestyle medicine. Um, I learned about Walk with the Doc, gosh, I think maybe four years ago when I was in Minnesota. Um, it's been an amazing organization to work with. I feel privileged to have run a chapter there and hoping to sort of get things started here in Oregon. So super excited to be here. So thank you for allowing me to participate. Thanks everybody. I'm Rachel Habash. I'm the chief operating officer for Walk with a Doc and I am gonna lead us through some questions about heart health. So let's get started. Um, the journey to heart healthy lifestyle, I think we can agree it's helpful if we start with small attainable steps, such as incorporating a daily step count. What I would like to ask of all of you is what are your recommendations that you make to your patients or community members and ways to improve heart health? Well, I agree. It's uh, baby steps. And I've really seen people do well when they focus on these small goals. When you break it down to every day, little changes, like walking one more block or taking the stairs, it's much less overwhelming. Chunk it down seems to be the, the key to success. Um, plus, instead of leaning into it with something you should stop doing, I think it's more fun and more powerful to think about one to two new habits to pick up to start doing that we can all use to make us heart healthier. Again, as simple as parking a little further away. Um, Another example and a common goal that I like to talk about with my patients is eating more fruits and vegetables and looking for ways to add more good fats into their diet. One food I do like to recommend is the avocado. Uh, avocados are a fruit plus they have a good fat. So it's a win-win. Um, that helps us meet both the fruit and the good fat recommendations that are associated with the healthy eating patterns, plus they are delicious. Uh, there's a growing body of research supporting avocados being heart healthy, so win, win, win. 
Yeah, I would totally agree with the premise of thinking of it as a positive rather than a negative. I think we just intuitively do better if we add rather than think about what we're taking away. So one of my big things is um, I sort of try to help people understand this dilution concept. I can't remember where I heard it. I think it was in a lecture on lifestyle medicine. If, if you can sort of crowd out the unhealthy things with healthy things, um, so eat a bigger salad, you know, eat more fruit. And by the time you're full, you can only eat a little bit of the, the fried fatty and the greasy and the meats and those sorts of things. So that concept of sort of crowding out the, the things that are unhealthy. Um, I love the idea of an avocado. The Love One Today website has a fantastic avocado cauliflower recipe. So I would encourage people to take advantage of that too. Well, another thing that I like to do every morning, instead of having toast with saturated fats like butter, I, I actually love to have creamy avocado in my refrigerator ready to go. And that gives me the, you know, the fiber, the unsaturated fats. It helps me get my fruit in there. So, so that's something that all of us can do to enjoy just a small little change. And it's delicious. Many of the people I work with uh, tell me they don't really like vegetables that much. So what I like to do is focus on the sugar because sometimes people don't recognize the importance of how sugar influences cholesterol, its metabolism, and how that can lead to uh, heart disease. So some of the suggestions I make are about reducing the number of sodas uh, you might drink in a day or a week, how much sugar you put in your coffee, reducing that if you use two teaspoons, maybe try one teaspoon every other day and make small steps to decrease sugar. And the last recommendation for people who have a blender at home is to try and substitute sugar with date paste. And that's something you can actually make yourself because dates have lots of, they have fiber, but they also have uh, vitamins and minerals and it's a fruit. So if you take one cup of water and two cups of dates, put that in the blender, it makes a nice smooth paste and you can use that to sweeten things. And that can also help um, improve your cholesterol if that's your concern. Um, well, I'm going to mirror the sentiments of uh, what everyone else has said. I always, uh, when I try to help people modify their behavior, I tell them they can't go from A to Z overnight. They have to go through every other letter of the alphabet. And so I talk about small steps, and those small steps make the final goal achievable. In fact, when people make progress, when they go from A to B to C, I think it gets them uh, excited, and they, they see that they're making progress, and they, they want to continue. Uh, so I, I, I'm a big advocate for taking small steps, whether it be in any of the concepts in lifestyle medicine, whether it's about exercise or uh, avoiding toxic behaviors or whether it's about nutrition or stopping smoking. Um, in particular, nutrition is a very important part of what I teach. And so I talk about incorporating more fruits and vegetables. And just like uh, was uh, said earlier, when you start to eat some of those, it crowds out some of the uh, unhealthy stuff. And again, once you make that progress, you know, psychologically, it makes a big impact. Um, as far as avocado is concerned, it is one of my favorite foods. I usually try to get about a, a half of an avocado in a, day, in a day. And I use it as a spread on toast, or I'll put it on top of my salad, um, or I'll put slices in my sandwiches. Uh, so I think there's a multitude of ways that you can use it. My next question was going to be, what tips do you give? What strategies around nutrition? But you all already talked about nutrition. So thank you. I appreciate that. And and I appreciate it too, because I know sticking to nutrition goals or implementing them can be really challenging. And so I appreciate all of the different insights and strategies you guys gave. I do want to turn it over back to Dr. David um, for a moment, because I know you wanted to talk about building a little more fruit and veggies into the plate. And again, thank you everybody for all the great nutrition tips you've already provided. Yeah, those tips were great. And uh, I will be doing the date paste. I love that idea. Um, so in addition to chunking it down and just um, as Dr. Riz said, getting that positive cycle going, let's get back to fruits and veggies after, let's say we climb the stairs once for the day. And I, I, like, I don't care how long it takes you to climb the stairs. Doing that is such a huge win. If you can substitute one elevator ride for the stairs that just sets everything going, but back to fruits and veggies. Um, sometimes when I look back on the week, um, mainly when my wife hasn't been here because she does such a great job of putting color on our plate. Um, I, that's something that I want to do. And 
you know, to move to the Aloha Adventure, this free event that I'm hoping so many of you can join, um, that challenge is to move more, but also with Aloha Adventure, we're going to be talking about filling our plate with a rainbow of fruits and veggies, just like the beautiful state of Hawaii. Um, uh, it's just awesome. So how do we tackle that as a daily goal? Um, and one way that I like to do, like we just had football this weekend is getting the veggies into the house, um, making them more available as Dr. Dunbar was saying. So planning a little ahead, um, putting them at eye level. I know Dr. Stanchik, who we're all fans of, talks about when you open that refrigerator door that they are right there. So getting those carrot sticks ready or the fruits you need to make a smoothie, um, but I like to have it so very quick, grab the carrot sticks, grab the guacamole and sit down for some football. Well, another way I like to have the families do what I call try a bite rule. I tell them that, you know, it takes seven to 10 times before you'll enjoy or like a, like a fruit or veggie. So um, a lot of my patients, you know, I, I tell families, you know, work together and you know, just try it. Try one bite every time, and by the tenth time, you might enjoy it. Great, thanks, guys. Um, so, heart health. There's so much more to heart health. Um, thank you for tackling the nutrition piece. So, let's pivot to physical activity. Um, yes, walk with a doc. So, um, I would like to talk about what the benefits are of physical activity, and then what are some easy activities that you guys do or that you encourage people to utilize to incorporate into their daily routine. So when we started Walk With The Doc way back in 2005, it was simply for the physical benefits and I knew it made me feel better. But as we've grown over the last 17 years now, the mental and emotional benefits are, I would say, equally as powerful. And there is no doubt that walking or any regular physical activity is by far the best thing we can do for our health, better than any procedure or medication, although those are of course necessary. We can start at the, you know, with mental health issues such as anxiety and depression, physical activity can lower that 47, 48%. It reduces Alzheimer's disease, arthritis, cancer, of course, coronary disease, heart attacks, stroke. There's really nothing that I can think of um, that walking or likewise physical activity cannot dramatically improve. And I think one thing in regards to emotional health is once we start feeling better and we get that increased self-esteem from going for a simple walk, that just starts a positive cascade where we start doing everything better. Maybe we start taking our medications more regularly. We start engaging. We start doing all the things that make us the people that we want to be. So um, it's a huge honor to support regular physical activity as uh, for a living because there's nothing better for us. Um, you know what I love about Walk with the Doc is that uh, I've used it as a tool to teach people that walking is an effective form of exercise. I think there was this concept that uh, you got to go out and you've got to exert yourself and get winded, uh, or you got to be this uh, world class athlete to get some exercise in, or run, or bike. To, and uh, uh, you know the evidence shows that uh, a good brisk walk is uh, effective exercise. And and in the uh, and the in lifestyle medicine we talk about uh, walking. 30 minutes, five times a week. And that's effective. You don't have to go out and be a runner or a jogger. Um, so I talk about walking with my patients and, and I start, I tell them to start small. Uh, you know, we, we, we do something that's achievable. And then like David said earlier, then we just increase the distance a little bit on a daily basis and tell them to go just a little further out. So that they have to turn around and go back just a little further in. And eventually, you know, if you do this uh, day after day after day, over the course of uh, several, uh, just a few weeks, you're increasing your distance tremendously. I really agree uh, with that. I, I like to encourage people who are a little 
uh, concerned they can't walk the distance uh, to think about dancing because dancing is fun. Most people like music. You can find the, the tune that really gets your foot tapping and get a few minutes of dancing in every day if the walking feels like it's too much for you. And so this is a, a small step you can take to ensure you have some activity. And it's also fun to grab a friend or two and dance with you. You can hold each other accountable uh, and have maybe a dance party. Now that we're on Zoom so much, maybe you can, you know, have a, there, there's such a thing as 10 minute recess we used to talk about. Maybe you can do that uh, with dancing if walking is a little bit too much for you. Because you can even dance in your seat. Um, those are really, really good. Um, I think the other thing I like to encourage people is to remember that you don't have to do all 30 minutes. I think there's been some evidence that even just small chunks are still beneficial, right? So if you take the last 10 minutes of your lunch and go for a walk or the last 15 minutes, um, I think that still has some added benefit. We don't have to necessarily bite it off in 30 minute chunks. Um, one of my, one of my patients, she had to go to, you know, walk to the to the mailbox. So can we stretch that walk a little bit, just tack on a little extra block when we go down to the mailbox. So just simple ways that things you're already doing in your life, but can we just stretch it within your comfort? And then you just increase the distance as you can go. Um, walking obviously is fantastic. And I think one of the things I really enjoyed when I was doing the, the, the group in Minnesota, it was community at the same time, which I think was really, really helpful. And now with COVID, I think Walk With The Doc has done a fantastic job of taking this virtual so that we still can keep that community um, and still get the benefits of physical activity. So I think that's phenomenal. All great tips. Um, maybe the only thing I would add is I encourage patients to get a pedometer um, to help keep keep themselves accountable and to set a reward. I, I, I love to um, gamify as much as I can. So um, you can find a really good pedometer for four or five dollars. Uh, a lot of watches now have them uh, as well. You know, one of the things I tell families is, you know, just chores and gardening and biking in Hawaii. I tell them, go out outdoors, go swimming, do something fun that the whole family can do and strengthen those family bonds, especially now during COVID. That's a perfect segue to my next question, Dr. Wee, because I want to ask all of you what your go-to movement is. For me personally, four of my days of activity are plugged in with other people. This morning I worked out with a friend, tomorrow I'm running with a friend. I mean, every day is scheduled with someone else because I realize for me it's checking off multiple boxes. It's that social connection and it's that activity all in one. Um, so I don't have a personally a favorite go-to. It's just I love doing it with others. So curious what our physician leaders are doing for their movement of choice. Besides walking, let me say besides walking. We know you're all walking, but besides walking. Um, so I've got two kiddos. I've got two girls, a seven and a three-year-old. So it's super important to get everybody outside. Everybody needs to get their wiggles out. Everyone has a better day that day. Um, so they love their bike or their scooter or whatever thing that moves. So usually it's something involving that. Um, I'll usually run and they will ride or scooter. Um, our oldest play soccer. It's whatever activity they're doing. I sort of tag along and get as much activity in as I can with them. It's really just letting them see that this is a priority and this should just be part of our day is to get outside and, and be active with whatever's available to us. You know, so yeah, I agree. Um, you know, you've taken away my favorite, which is walking. So uh, what I tell people is it's whatever gets them moving. And, uh, you know, it can be a sport. Uh, it can be dancing. Um, I agree that uh, what we need to do is just get out there and get some movement in and get it in for uh, some minimum standard of time. Mine is bicycling and playing tennis. And with tennis, you can have one friend or three friends. So I play singles and I play doubles. But singles is a lot more work, so depends on how I feel. So my husband and I, we, we've got cruiser bikes, with, which have just one speed. We love to go riding together. The sunsets in Hawaii are beautiful. And almost every day we have a rainbow. So I try to get out there every day. Totally agree with Dr. Fitzpatrick and Dr. We love to ride with friends on trails and nature. It's Next to walking, it's the best. Thank you, everybody.
we've talked about nutrition. We've talked about physical activity. I would love to hear from you guys how you personally prioritize health. It's a challenge. I'll be honest. Um, we often are looking after other people and forget to look after ourselves. I'm going through this right now. Uh, but what I've decided to do is just be intentional about slowing down and getting enough sleep. And then after that, making sure I drink enough water. Gosh, that's so important. We see a lot of dehydration in the clinic. Um, I, I kind of have agreement with my wife. If it's snowy and cold, 13 degrees like it is here today, I go to the gym and um, walk on the treadmill or ride a bike for right after work and before dinner. So just blocking that time. You know, I, I love to listen to motivational podcasts and, you know, just, just keeping me persistent. I'd like to journal every night to, you know, just see how far I've come and, and look at my successes and what I can learn from my failures. I agree with what was said earlier is that, uh, uh, when we live life, we tend to sometimes ignore ourselves. We get caught up in everything else that's going on. And so it's just important to think, to prioritize our own health as well. It's something that we're trying to teach everybody else. And we have to lead by example. If, uh, if we don't lead by example, then, uh, people, we lose credibility. So it's important to, uh, prioritize our health. And, and I, and I adhere to the lifestyle medicine, uh, attendance, which is, uh, nutrition, uh, exercise, avoiding toxic behaviors, trying to get good sleep. Uh, and so I, I, you know, I try to pay attention to those. Now, no one's perfect, but, you know, just keeping those, uh, those things in mind and just trying to uh, move in the right direction is very important. Yeah, I'll agree. It's, it's challenging. Uh, it can be tough. I think the one thing that I found that helps me is to actually put it on my schedule. Mm -hmm. So I try to write down when I'm running, how long I'm going to run. And I look at my day and try to get it at least a week out to know, okay, I'm going to fit in a 20 minute or a 30 minute here or there. So scheduling really has helped me make sure I carve out that time. Um, so that's my, my one little way to keep my sanity. Thank you. I think it's appropriate. We should clap for you guys. We should all clap for each other because you guys are amazing. So thank you very much for being here. Um, it's been fun. I really appreciate you carving out the time, sharing your wisdom with us. Um, so much gratitude to you for that. In the show notes, we will include links back to these wonderful panelists who have, have joined us today and share their wisdom. So look for that in the show notes. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Dr. David Sabger to send us off with some encouraging words. Yeah, so my heart is full. Um, these doctors that volunteered to take time out of their day, whether they're at home or even on vacation, um, means the world to me. I know it does to Rachel and Brian too. These are words we can live by. I think a lot of us want to live to 100, but also more importantly, want to do it with a high quality of life. I think if we take these simple tips that our experts here provided, we are well on our way. So thank you all for carving the time to join us today. It means a lot to us.